Hi everyone, I'm Konstantin Sterhoff, an instructor of Artefacts Online Learning Platform. Today we are going to speak about the issue that bothers many amateur artists, especially beginners how to choose the right watercolors and to have a good value for money. There is a huge choice of watercolors on the market. And as you know, the larger the choice, the harder it is to choose. Expensive, cheap, different manufacturers from different countries, granulated or non-granulated, which one to buy? What is better to start with? Students' watercolors or straightaway professional ones? Let's stop this storm of questions and move on step by step. But first subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon not to miss new artifact videos. If there are any topics you want to learn more about, write in the comments below and we will try to highlight them in our next videos. And don't forget that we prepare a present for you in every video. Today you will get one more. Watch the video till the very end. Now it's time to fix all the misunderstandings concerning choosing watercolors. Let's talk about paints. Uh, I'm sure you have so many questions. Uh, what to choose? Tubes, pants or half pants? Half pants, it's little containers. It's uh, that is half of normal pants. Uh, so I don't know. This one is just uh, half pants. It's very practical if you go somewhere and you want to paint on a train or somewhere in a cafe and you don't uh, have much space around for your tools. In this case, it's very practical. But if you want to paint, uh, if you want to paint uh, just in your studio, on your desk, uh, just something a little bit bigger. So then probably it's more convenient to have uh, paints in pans. So they can be uh, of different types, different brands. And uh, what is important here is just uh, to see if they are easily uh, getting off or they are fixed there. I think it's better if they are fixed because if uh, accidentally you uh, drop your box uh, then you have to find all the pants around and to put it back and sometimes you have also uh, a problem uh, to to remember where exactly you, you have had them because um, uh, this is another thing you have to uh, to organize in your box in which order you have your pants and in, in, in each in in which order you have your um, uh, paints in a box but i think uh, for uh, for an artist who paints a lot who travels and paints in different places it's more practical to have paints in tubes uh, because uh, if you have them in pants and it is not such a small box but maybe a bigger box you you have to have uh, quite a lot of these little pants with you and sometimes you don't know which one is uh, you run uh, out of and uh, sometimes it's difficult to find the right one and you have just a big um, package of these pants so um, I, I don't do it now because it's just a little bit uh, annoying so I know exactly which colors I am running out of and I have those in tubes with me and but y you y probably you have the uh, question how uh, what to do with these tubes uh, it uh, what I do with tubes is I'm just buying a pallet, something like this, just empty. There are many different ones, uh, also like this, for instance. So I have uh, quite a few of them for different purposes and I fill them with different paints and different brands and maybe uh, colors of certain uh certain palette or certain uh 
uh, for certain purpose. Like for instance, I have a palette only with uh, uh, granulating colors. So, and then you can organize this palette easily by um, adding the uh, paints from from tubes. For instance, I start with yellow here and and going like this filling these little containers with different colors in my case you can see it is so warm colors first then they go through uh, violets going to blues and then uh, green blacks and then browns uh, and the last ones uh, it's just one green and moon glow which is a kind of muddy violet uh, so like this for me it's convenient uh, uh, like this it's organized quite pretty well and I have also additional mm, colors which I add to the palette what is important for your palette box or your paint box uh, it's good to have enough space for mixing colors so for me it's quite sufficient I'm mixing here and here and also in this area uh, also if it's necessary you can take off this part and you can mix here or here uh, also there are many different brands many different brands and many different uh, colors you can choose any of them uh, like here for instance it's Holbein here it's Daniel Smith here's uh, White Knights there are so many different ones you can choose any you like but what is important for choosing colors for your palette you can see uh, many manufacturers have very big choice it's too much yeah you don't need all these colors because we can mix colors so you don't need a special color for each sh shade or every uh, tint that you use in your painting so I think we can we can limit our palettes to maybe 20 colors or 24 colors uh, in my case it's 18 colors here and th uh, three additional colors here so and that is completely sufficient for me so uh, these uh, colors which are mm, uh, basic uh, can be of any uh, any brand I think uh, something what is uh, probably cheaper something what is convenient for you mm, like yellow and maybe like red uh, orange blue um, or ochre or sienna if uh, their shade uh, is um, suits you then then you just can use it but uh, some of the brands have very special colors like for instance Daniel Smith has uh, lavender and cobalt till blue and wisteria or also moon glow uh, and those colors are quite special and also they have uh, like Daniel Smith for instance some granulating colors so sometimes you can use uh, those granulating colors uh, extra like bloodstone or uh, probably uh, lunar black or Mm, tiger's eye genuine or something uh, or maybe green appetite uh, you can use them specially for this granulating effect and you can add those colors to your palette uh, so like this uh, my choice is this kind of uh, plastic e uh, quite light box with 18 uh, uh, places for the paints and quite a big palette, uh, palette uh, and space for mixing and uh, 18 colors plus three. Oh, you can change also with other also you can have some additional palette if you need uh, extra place um, for mixing or you can mix it also on a paper so uh, I would recommend uh, these colors it's my palette my uh, signature palette it's uh, Hansa yellow which can be lemon yellow or o yellow ochre sienna um, sedona orange um, red 
uh, py uh, pyro red and pyro orange. And here is uh, Kinecridon rose, a rose of ultramarine, uh, ult French ultramarine, uh, verdita, manganese blue, then uh, uh, turquoise ultramarine, indigo, uh, neutral black, tiger's eye genuine, uh, burnt amber, sub green, and moon glow. And besides those, I have also Visteria, Lavanda, and Cobalt Hill Blue. Uh, what is important when you choose colors? It's important to know a few things. Uh, light resistance. It's like la light fastness rating. Uh, they, uh, they show it like LR. Uh, LR in uh, uh, you can see the uh, the uh, some some of them um, have uh, numbers like one to four. Uh, uh, in this case, the more a number, the less resistant. Or some of them uh, makes like little stars. In this case, the more stars, the better. So you have to to, ch to check uh, how they uh, rate their light fastness. Uh, then transparency. Uh, how transparent or opaque is the paint? Uh, normally it's a little square and sometimes it's just uh, empty, sometimes it's half filled and sometimes it's just black. So that shows um, how transparent is the paint? If it is empty, then it's transparent. When it is filled, then um, then it's uh, opaque, uh, and it could be also semi-opaque. Like uh, transparent, it could be all um, talos, kinecridons, and like ye um, lemon yellow, or also um, quite many colors. You have to check to check and some paints uh, considered uh, uh, as semi-opaque it's like ochre sienna maybe uh, amber and uh, some could be opaque uh, mainly it's those that have some white paint in it it's like uh, here you know, visteria or uh, lavanda. They are uh, almost opaque because they have some uh, white uh, pigment in them. Uh, then also what is important is staining or non-staining paint it is. Uh, staining means that after drying you cannot remove it because it goes into the into your paper in the fibers of the paper and then you cannot lift it and you cannot remove it. So uh, probably it's also important part. If you want uh, to have a chance to lift it, then it should be non-staining. And also granulation. Then also you have to check if uh, the color that you are using for your palette granulating or it doesn't granulate. Uh, so that's it. That's all I wanted to tell you about choosing colors. And I, I think it can be useful subscribe to our channel I hope now everything is more or less clear and you are ready to choose the watercolor you really need like this video if it was useful for you and if you want to learn about the colors I use and about the other essential materials follow the link below and download a free watercolor supplies guide which we prepared for you it will help you to find the right supplies for your painting activity without spending much time and much money for it. Now it's yours. Keep on painting and creating beauty. Never give up on your way. See you.